two. We want to start an ongoing fetch fest. Okay? We want to create a website where there's a weekly Jewish theme that we give to people that are subscribing to the site and viewing it. And they can then create content, video, audio, animation based on that theme of the week. We are then going to put all of this together in a combined mashup. And we're going to we're going to share it to everybody. And people can write it up, they can write it down. It's going to be shareable, it's funny, and it has broad appeal. Also, we'll be able to glean valuable insights and best practices for funders and organizers on what we should and shouldn't be doing. And when people visit the site, they're going to see a highly curated, highly customized list of local Montreal events of which they would want to go to. So what's in it for me? Well, it really depends on who the me is. For me as a millennial, I'm going to finally have a direct, easy path to talk to those people that are actually running the events. I wouldn't have had that before. As a community, I'm going to be able to engage with people locally and globally in one place that I also might not have access to otherwise. Funders are finally going to get to know firsthand and very quickly what does and doesn't work. There's going to be a resurgence of Jewish storytelling and humor, and people are now going to a Jewish site that might never have gone to a Jewish site because the humor has lured them in. This is going to basically help out with long-term engagement and is going to lead to in real life action on the ground by people going to these events. So what do we call this thing? Well, you know, in research, we've noticed that there's a clear trend in millennials that using fuck yeah as a celebratory exclamation is on the rise. In fact, over 100 fuck yeah blogs are created every day. In fact, some at this very moment. Also, the very successful fuck cancer campaign has been going on here right here in Montreal. So we invite you to join in on the fuck yeah cheers from fetching to happy endings. Thank you. From reverent to irreverent. Thank you. I'd also like to invite the rest of my team to come up with a question. Judges. I have a comment and question. I, I love it because it's sort of the opposite of what it seems to be on its face. It's sort of using negativity to get positivity. I also happen to love it. Um, curious whether how if, if other people don't love the name, how married are you to the name? We realize it might be a little controversial. And while we think it's just the sort of thing that will attract those that aren't engaged or speaking to millennials in the language that they're used to speaking, speaking to each other in these days, we are absolutely committed. We don't want this to be the deal breaker. So we are committed to focus grouping it, shopping it around, seeing what works, and we're not married to it. We can absolutely see any reason. I, uh, I think the name uh, needs to be part of it. Um, I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fuck yeah. Yeah. I, I have the uh, I have a, I have a Tumblr. It's called Fuck Yeah for Trend, and um, it didn't cost me a penny. I, I didn't pay for it. It, it sparked for Tin Week in Montreal. Um, that didn't cost me anything either. Where's the money? Is it to create the content, to create the videos? Like, is, are you taking it from other places? Like, you know, like where's the end table? Yeah, good question. I think first is to build the platform. So we are open to like content coming in from all sorts of places. Um, so to build the platform, to build the brand, and to start the outreach, and also to start the curation of the content. So we think really the magic sauce is curating the content so that it can be shared and be shareable. Um, and and we think that this is like something that can bring in people who would never go to a Jewish site, who would never like check out you know, Jewish events. They're coming because it's fun. And once they come to the site, they might check out something else. So it's really about just starting that movement and 
just to add, there's definitely a very serious side to it on the insights part. So we want to be able to look deeply at the data, data mining for the four is hundred and other. Yeah, basically, I mean, having done and built lots of sites and running lots of sites, uh, that, yeah, you can create the Tumblr, but to create something that's going to last and has that kind of attraction, that attractive kind of shiny appeal that we're going to need to do when we create to lure some of these people, like on your dive or like college humor, it is going to take some initial seed money. Yeah. I have a last question to add. I think it's great. I think we can have a little bit of platform that a lot of the people that will be very open to go there and say what they think. <laughs> but uh, but I'm, I'm concerned or probably something you should think of as um, you know after the information you have you know it's like the music when you get all those people how do you you have do you take it that's why you need funding because you you, you will translate it into uh, insights and then after you will go and sell it to organizations like People come to you and they say, yeah, we want to have a research on this. Uh, yes. So, so one of the things is a great product. I don't know if the site is here, OkCupid. Um, OkCupid went initially launched, and currently they have a whole labs department developing new kinds of ways of looking at the data from people that are going onto this like online dating site. And they're looking at you know, which photo is most attractive to women under a certain age, and which is uh, you know, what category of food is something that's going to attract me? They have these really crazy and very specific insights they're looking into, and that's something that they provide and open it up for everyone to use, and that's something that we would do too. And I think, I think you know, it, it is about partnerships, and over the last three days, working with these amazing people, we see everyone has been to the table and there's a, a thousand amazing initiatives happening in the Jewish community. So how can we share those insights and how can we build partnerships to both engage young Jews but also tap them into what's already happening? Fuck yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, and Mike, you're fine. So, thank you very much. We are here to ask the judges to sequester for seven minutes. Seven minutes. In the meantime, don't go anywhere. Seven minutes. I know you can do it. Asking Jews to stay put for seven minutes. But we're gonna let you talk. Yeah. So we're gonna let you talk, and we're actually gonna ask Ina, Ina Abiodun, to come and uh, uh, moderate a discussion with you, where you can ask the audience can ask any questions over the next seven minutes um, for clarifications from any of these groups. So if you have to go back, please do. But of course, there's gonna be a mass exodus. There's only one back here. Just kidding. Fire start. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for sticking around. Um, so, as you probably already know, you will ultimately be the decision makers. The person who walks away with the giant check or uh, an image of the giant check um, will be determined by you. So, we'd like to give you an opportunity to have your questions answered because when the top three people are announced, you are going to have to make that decision. So, if you're on the fence and you have your potential top three and you're curious to know anything, something, about one of these projects, this is an opportunity to ask a question. So I'll, I'll open it up. I see, I see hands kind of poking. Oh, we'll bring you a mic once we were on. Oh, there's a question back there. And please just say, if you don't remember the team name, just say what the project was. Hi, uh, I have a question for the Shabu team. Uh, there's, there's an organization called uh, Reboot, uh, which put out a Sabbath manifesto. It's all about kind of what you you're talking about reimagining Shabbat. Um, so this is an opportunity to experience it in your own way. I wonder if uh, it was influenced by that. And, yeah. um, it actually wasn't initially um, inspired by that. It came to the fact that when we were brainstorming ideas, we came together because we personally just needed a break. So um, yeah, I'm turning up now. Um, so yeah, that was the initial inspiration. Of course, through our research, we did learn more about that project and we really admire what they're doing. Um, what we really want to tap into is the community approving of you taking a break and also geo-mapping to find different ways to connect both online and offline. So. I know that the, um, it's, it's going to be called Unbreakable. 
activities like the sort of day when they, one day a year for 24 hours having it become part of like a weekly tradition and also you deciding if it's going to be 30 minutes if it's going to be an hour if it's going to be 12 hours if it's going to be 24 hours so i think for us it's more about it becoming part of our lives on a regular basis um we're not giving the rules we're letting people make their own so Can you enlighten us? What are some of the criteria that the judges are using now to judge? All amazing. All right, I'll, I'll find them. Oh, here we go. Okay. So, um, no, actually, the card is not here. <laughs> They're good judges, and they actually took the cards with them. Yeah, they did more on it. Probably good. So, <laughs> um, I, I know that um, there are a couple things definitely high on the list, which is um, creativity, um, usability, level of engagement. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Um, so, they're rating on a scale. Um, they're looking at creativity. Is the project uh, an innovative project? So, looking at the innovation. Uh, the feasibility. Can you actually do this project in the time? In a, reasonable amount of time for the ten thousand dollars that you would be receiving um the focus is the project well defined do we get it um and does it meet the guidelines outlined and finally relevance how um is, how, the, um, is the project engaging to uh young jewish adults and um yeah that's what they're they're rating on right now we haven't put in it <laughs> we have another question here so two of the things that I'm always concerned about that they didn't ask is how do you define success? Okay, so that was one of the things that I was thinking about. And the second question, and I don't know that it's relevant to millennials, but it's relevant to me, and that probably doesn't make any it doesn't matter, is how sustainable is the idea? So one of the things I think we're concerned about working with millennials is the quickness of ideas coming and going and coming in and out. And so you can have a fabulous program and a fabulous plan that's really good for a year. And then what do you do in the next year to keep people's attention and transition them into something else? So those are just two things that I really thought about a lot um, during the presentation. So I don't even know if that's relevant. But. Does one of the groups want to address that? How, how do you keep it? Oh, perfect. So um, it's a great question, and um, part of me says we need to build a plan for sustainability. And we actually, the event, we actually thought about how different initiatives or ways of both pushing the community as well as allowing them to build sustainability. But I think there is maybe something we actually have to think about as to all these new ideas are coming up, and they don't always stick, and that maybe that's something that we just need to embrace that millennials. That's, that's their active way of being in the world, and that they are going to stick, and they like to innovate in new things too. Um, so I hope that. Um, that's, uh, oh, here we go. To add to that, I would say that even engaging and making new connections within the community, or even engaging people outside of the community about your own issues, so you're educating, you're reflecting, and those connections are long lasting. I'm wondering if the uh, team can speak to the fact that you guys are doing something that's based on a meme, and for those of you who know what, our memes are kind of disposable. So, so um, how, do you, how, how do you deal with that? It is, it is a real issue. You know, the disposability of web culture, Tumblr culture. Today it's hot, tomorrow it might not be hot. Yeah, I think for, yeah. I think for us the focus is more on the storytelling, storytelling of not just the not just the humor has something that goes to come from both an hour long an hour every corner of duration of the novel along with that. But the key part of the site is highlighting the events and the events and organizers in our world around the world that must exemplify the insights we hope to share. And those events might evolve over time, just like the technology we're saying. And this site hopes to be a source for promotion of them. 
sing along to it. Yeah, humor doesn't die. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think for Jew camp, uh, definitely the sustainability uh, ability, um, would be me coming back to camp. Are you going to Jew camp? Are you, are you guys going? You know, where did you meet? We met at camp. When? Last year. <laughs> Not 10 years ago. It's, 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 it's a shorter camp experience, it's only three days, and the next year maybe you want to be a counselor. Because we're all staff and campers at the same time, maybe you have a program. Maybe you want to make a sophisticated banquet that brings in some a particular chef. Maybe you have that idea and you're not just a camper the first time, maybe you're a counselor. Um, and we can do this all over North America. There are little camps everywhere. And what you camp you go to? In our online sustainability after, um, it's called J-U, it's putting the, the U in Jew. Um, you're not just a Jew, you're a Jew as a camper. Dear Jews, and we're spelling it J-U-S. Dear Jews, in preparation for camp this year, this is the list of things that you'll need. And so you're a Jew as J-E-W, but you're also a Jew camper, J-U. <laughs> All right, we have time for one more question. Let me just give you a heads up. Um, we are going to be doing the voting thing, so get those um, smartphones out of your purses, wallets. Um, you will be asked to text. It's going to take all of two minutes for you to text in the number one to the top rating. And it will be happening in less than five minutes. And it's coming back. So the numbers are. Ah, okay. All right, the number you're going to be texting to is on the, uh, is on the television screen. So we find it on the front of your text window, and then um, when you get top screen, send it to your top one. We're voting too, right? Yeah, why not? Uh, the number is, it does have, there's a black bubble on the television screen to your left and right. Yeah. Five one four two nine nine one four three two. All right, so I think we're ready, ready to announce the top three. Drum roll. Okay, so we're actually uh, going to get excited to the seven minute judging process uh, that, well, of course, we've been going through for a while and we've had a lot of uh, great conversation. So, we need to talk to you guys. Oh, sorry, can we get the, um, the mics if that's possible? Uh, so, um, so, we want to really congratulate all the participants. <laughs> We really had we to really take three, but we had to, so we did. So the three that we chose is um, uh, Shabut, Rosh, uh, and Farukia. Can you guys say uh, a couple of words about uh, Shabut? Shabut is a great concept. Well, first of all, the name Moon Rock. So it's a name that is too comfortable. No, it's not going to make it. But Shabut, I think there is a, a Jewish a Jewishness into it. And then it's offline, online. And I think there is something going on on, on this. And the uh, market coach, I think, like I said, we said, kosher is a it's very, very Jewish and it's positive, and to make it, to organize it, and to make it like a clean eating, you know, I think mean, it's a great idea yeah. there. And the Fabia is a great, great thing to, uh, it's a great research bank that I think we can think about and, and, and make it to the next level where you can use that information and insight and make anything. Yeah, in the Jewish community. Thank, Thank you. you. So, 514-299-1432. If anybody wants to add, it's 
So, um, can you have the screen back? I'm sorry. So, one, all you need to do is text 514 you like shows to win. You like win one text. If you like market coach to win, you write win two in your text. If you like fuck yeah to lose.com to win, then you will text win three. So I won four, two, nine, nine, one, four, two. We've never done this before. Looks cool. Um, please dial the right number because one number is my house. My but, um, so 514-299-1432, Shaboot is win one, Market Coach is win two, and Fuck Yeah Jews or Yeah Jews for the PG version of our line is win three. So you have uh, um, so one more time the uh, April twelfth everybody's looking at me like uh, April twelfth is the closing deadline for cultural grants and Gen J grants. If you have an idea that didn't get chosen here, you were inspired by an idea, you'd like to do something, um, a bit off the top grants are available all year round. Check out a bit off the top dot com. And then last time, you have 30 seconds left to vote. 514 299 We'll announce the result in 30 seconds. One minute. We have 20 seconds left to vote. The votes are coming fast and furiously. Yeah, we're going to get 20 seconds left to vote. Our judges back here are frantically counting the votes coming in. They might be drinking some poutine after this. 10 seconds left to vote. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. <laughs> I now hold in my hand the top one, two, or three. So the PowerPoint doesn't work, but of course the answer is my next thing is the second set that's new now. Imagine I walk down the street and I have money. Um, oh, I got the number one. I didn't get number two or three. Okay. Yeah, actually, you can announce number three. Our guest, Emmanuel Abar, can announce the team with the third place votes. Is Shabuz. Yay, Shabuz. That night, it was Shabuz Center. And so, the moment we've all heard it before. Taking sides. And the winner of the inaugural New Montreal competition is. Mark is coach. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you for coming here.